Welcome to the podcast. We talk about all the things that are hidden in the shadows. This is Isaac. And this is Megan. And today's episode is all about urban exploring, abandoned locations, and stories from urban explorers. Yes. Yes. Well, in in all honesty, we have a haunted house, do we? No. Oh, I can talk about that weird thing, though. What weird thing? I don't know if I mentioned in the last... Anyways, so when we were talking about the haunted Camp Lejeune episode, if you've listened to that, I was thinking about going by the USO and filming the outside of the the building to give you guys like some perspective, because obviously I can't go in. Um, And across is the river area. And that's where I was intentionally like going to park and then give you guys some footage of the USO, because that's one of the locations we talked about. Anyways, every time I would go there, like in my mind to like set a plan, um, I kept feeling like the car, like the water was rising, grabbing the car and taking the car into the the river. And I was like, what's going on with that? And every time I would try to go down there, something would ha- like prevent me from going. Like my guides would say, hey, don't detour. Hey, you know, like I don't think today's the day. Anyways, long and behold, there was a crash that the car went off the bridge and into the river right in the spot that I would have been parked at. Oh, yeah, I remember saying that. Yeah, so I don't know yeah. if I mentioned that in the last episode, but no, because the last episode would have been Haunted Camp Lejeune. But I just thought that was insane, and yeah, I was like, sometimes with, with the ability, <laughs> with abilities, sometimes when you get like, validation or when things connect like that you still like it still makes me go like oh man what the heck yeah well on today's episode yes on to today's and if also if you enjoyed the bonus episode with uh cory it's kind of what leads into today's episode yes. because in all honesty um paranormal investigators when we go places especially places that are not necessarily off limits but or hard to get to because they're abandoned Mm-hmm. Um, are usually places people investigate. So in mm-hmm. all, yeah, and like basically, we're kind of paranormal investigators and urban explorers are kind of in the same ballpark. Yeah, because we have to sometimes, not all the time, uh, crawl, jump across, mm-hmm. walk to get to a location that's all in reality like abandoned because it was left behind. Hospitals, sane asylums, mm-hmm. stuff like that, or even battlefields and such. But it, be, it it comes to a sense that we become urban explorers to the minor degree, and not to the extent that some urban explorers yeah. do. And some urban explorers become paranormal investigators because some of the places they go tend to be haunted. Yeah, yeah. Not every place is haunted. Not every building is haunted, just no. to get that out there. And there are some urban explorers that don't believe in the paranormal. Just They just want to urban explore. So there's that. And that I found out, too, like because... Um, during doing the research, I, I'm aside from this episode, I'm part of a couple different Facebook pages that do like urban exploring and abandoned houses and stuff like that. And because um, like for the last like year, year and a half or not or half a year, um, I've been really pulled to look into abandoned places. Um, and a lot of I know one of the main things that they get asked is why two urban explorers, like when they post stuff in those forums, why they don't share the location. And that's just because, you know, a lot of them want to preserve what the building is. And you have people that unfortunately vandalize and do things to the buildings. And sometimes it's like darker things that they do, i.e. like rituals and weird stuff. So... <laughs> And I think Corey talks about that a little bit on the bonus episode, right? Yeah. yeah I, I remember he was talking about a sense how, because I asked him straight up, like, have you found anything like, you know, like satanic rituals done and stuff like that? And he mm-hmm. goes, oh, yeah. I, oh, I yeah. see it a lot. And he goes, yeah. and I asked him, like, where? Like, well, kind of every room, but most of the time it's a basement. Yeah. He'll find pentagrams. He'll find, like, a ritual with candles left over. Uh, sometimes even, like, blood, but he doesn't know if it's human or animal. Dang. Most things doesn't want to find out. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't want to either. <laughs> But um, some of the we have a couple of different stories, and then when we cover the places, um, there's like people's retelling of stuff that they experience because I'm you know with this stuff, the paranormal, uh, especially with the asylums and the hospitals and stuff like that, 
things that, you know, places where people weren't treated right, died, you know, and now are is left. And sometimes there's personal belongings in there. Like a lot of these places we're going to talk about, personal belonging, belongings are still there. And especially if it was, you know, like, for instance, a kid being thrown into an insane asylum uh, in the 30s or 60s. And the parents just didn't really give a shit. And they died in the same asylum. And they feel like that's their only place they could call home because that's where they were stayed. You know? So I think. Uh, was there a prison or something we were supposed to investigate that was abandoned? Yes. So it's further out than what we anticipated. Mm. But apparently they used it in the 1800s. Mm. And I want to say it's closer to Raleigh, so it's about two to three hours out. No. But um, I'm starting to collect places. Um, some of them obviously aren't abandoned, but some places that I think when we start really going out and traveling a little bit more, um, we're going to hit up because there's a couple places I think that I'm even going to talk about in here that um, are in the North Carolina area that I definitely want to look at and see because just from the photos and some of these places i'll tell you exactly like what i feel from the photos um so yeah you gonna get into that well here uh before that i was just going to say something is that us as investigators that we have done investigating places we've gone we haven't really gone to an abandoned building we spent most of our times either in the woods yeah. or in a building that's already established and taken care of yeah. Which has been the library. Even though the one place that we did go, it almost looked like there was a foundation of a house. And then when we looked, it almost looked like an abandoned, when we looked on the map, it looked like an abandoned subdivision. Remember? Yes. Like, uh, it, the, what we found in the woods uh -huh. was like the, the, the foundation of, uh, was that a house? Yeah. And it actually had a basement, but the basement was covered up in dirt. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah. So there's, there's, who knows? So, yeah, I mean, basically, I was pointing, gonna... I was saying, is that basically the point was I was making that we really haven't done much urban exploring yeah. into buildings. We spent most of our times out in the woods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. Which doesn't mean it isn't haunted in, in the extent it is, because I think, I, you know what? That's the poll we need to put up. <laughs> what would you find is more scary to investigate, haunted woods or haunted building? I think people would say woods just because there's not only dealing with uh, ghosts, you might be dealing with animals or creatures or even like crazy people in the woods or something yeah there's more elements to but that. i don't know i don't know why like that is e even though i'm working through fear like through like healing and stuff with the spiritual awakening stuff um i look at some of these places and i'm like i feel like when i'm there i might i wouldn't be scared but like looking at it and thinking about it i'm like yeah and then two i give urban explorers props because they got to not only deal with the law sometimes they got to deal with security guards. They got to deal with uh, findings. Like, uh, there's some areas that I'm going to talk about that there's just like some weird stuff that they find, like body parts in some of the hospitals, toxic waste, asbestos, mold. No. Like, I give them props, and they're just going in there to get get the black lung. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> no, but to get like just. To show, like, hey, you know, like, this was a bustling place, and now it's not. So, you ready to yeah. dig into? Okay, so the first place that I looked into was a place called uh, Union Pond Mill. And there's a guy on YouTube. Um, he goes by Frank Horror, and he actually goes to places. And he's gone to this location once. And he doesn't really go there with, like, a paranormal... Uh, viewpoint he kind of just goes there to explore anyways the entire time of the first video he kept feeling like this black shadow was behind him so he ended up doing a second video um of a spirit box but a little bit about this union park mill so it's in manchester connecticut um it's an abandoned victorian era mill in the middle of modern manchester um, a great article about this location was posted by Abandoned Wanderers, exploring abandoned locations in New England. Um, it was once a thriving staple of local community, wearing different hats over the years. Now it's nothing more than a dark and twisted reflection of its former self. It was first built in the early 1900s, working with both wool and paper. Um, 
but yeah so the first video the frank horror guy um he which i i recommend looking at his videos i was very intrigued sometimes when uh i watch the like urban exploring and stuff like that depending on the person i can get kind of bored kind of easy but this guy you know he's funny he looks at the the locations with an open mind and stuff like that so um yeah another location that's in North Carolina that this, like, I want to go to this without, like, if we are on the western part of North Carolina and doing investigations or anything like that, vacation even, I want to go to it. The only problem is that it's a hike. And um, it's located in Silva, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And it's an ab- abandoned plane wreck. And it, the plane is still there. Two people died that were in it. And it's from the 80s. Um, it is at Water Rock Knob. There's actually a plane crash wreck that took place in the 1980s and is still there. Um, you can see some of the video footage online and on TikTok um, that goes into detail and shows you like what the area looks. Apparently, the hike is pretty treacherous. Like it goes up a lot with a lot of like twisty, rocky situations. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we can we can probably skip hiking stuff. Yeah. Well. But- we say woods we've been in, but mostly flatlands. Yeah, flatlands. Yeah, <laughs> this is hiking. Um, only in our state, like that uh, website covered an article about it, and they even gave directions. So after the initial flat paved service, the trail soon turns fully uphill and requires some sure footing as you scramble up several rock stairs. That sounds fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to watch where you're going, but once you reach your destination, you'll be re- rewarded with quite a sight to see. And it's basically, um, I don't, I guess they, they took the bodies out or incinerated. I don't know. Um, so a little bit about what happened was the, the plane was en route to Silva on the night of November 24th, 1983, and some undefined precipitation and low-lying cloud cover. The plane crashed shortly before 6 p.m., and the two people aboard the plane died. Um, so basically, it crashed 11 miles before the plane's destination. Um, there's a guy, um, he goes by Florida Trailblazer. If you go on his YouTube, you can actually see him hike up to the place, which is kind of cool. Um, while there wasn't any like reportings of paranormal happening, I feel like it's one of those places that it's kind of interesting to see whether or not there's paranormal stuff or not. So, um, so this is the next one. Uh, and this one... Put it to you this way, when I was researching it and I was looking at the stuff, the photos of it and reading it, and I was kind of, obviously, when I read stuff and I can I can kind of connect with it, I can get images of some of the stuff in my third eye. Anyways, um, <clears throat> okay, so there is a place called the Stonewall Jackson Reform School. And so this is about like an hour north of Charlotte. Um, and there is a, um, a urban exploring, like, I guess like blog website that covered the backgrounds of this location. And it's on Urban X Underground. And the way they described it was good intentions gone horribly wrong served as a time capsule of cruelty. So that tells you a little bit. Um, so the school was basically created as an alternative for bad kids um, to give them an option to avoid prison time with grown adults and give a formal education such as a trade. Everything was okay until after World War II, um, where when asylums and mental hospital hospitals were on a rampage for mistreating patients. Stonewall Jackson served as a site to first test out vasectomies. So basically, they would test out and trial run vasectomies on teen boys. Um, Six total were completed at the location. Um, They actually had people interviewed who were part of the school. And one of the guys, his name is Waisel Beard, said that there were a lot of assaults. And one boy 
got ran over by a dump truck and killed, including boys who were badly beaten. So Hmm. this place has a lot of dark. I mean, there was sexual assaults taking place. There was one guy that said he had been to war and he had seen more blood being shed at this place than when he went off to war. So that tells you right there. Yeah, there's a there's a I forgot where it was. Uh, They talked about on Ghost Adventures an abandoned um, uh, school for uh, challenge kids. Mm -hmm. Right. And how they were treated badly. Mm-hmm. Like, no one ever cared. There wasn't enough nurses for the amount of kids and mm-hmm. people that were there uh, to a point where they got abandoned. I remember that was the episode where they heard, like, a big, like, hum, right? Like a big bang mm-hmm. or something. And they went up and they found a desk that was, like, old and heavy and it was moved. Dang. Right? And I remember they interviewed some nurses or something who worked there, like, years before when it was open. And the funny thing is they never said what the name of the school was. Yeah. But the location is near us i would say northern east area wow but um uh yeah the kids are treated badly they're just left to their own devices a lot of them basically were just covered in their own poo and stuff like that wow. yeah, it was just yeah it's terrible 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 things yeah well like when i did the behind the scenes like interview that i did the blog post with Corey, and i asked like what was the most like intense thing that he's been to he specifically said reform schools are the worst because you know how, like, there's evidence when you go in there how they were treated. Mm-hmm. And when I read the story about the dump truck, I mean, the, apparently, like, dump trucks would just come in, not pay attention to what was around them. And the dump truck just totally came in and smashed a kid and didn't care. And I don't understand. I just don't understand the parents' viewpoints either. I mean, I get it. Your kid's bad. But obviously, it stemmed from somewhere. It's not just out of the blue that your kid acts like that. And that kind of emotion taken suddenly, it sticks and it stays. Yeah. And the the crappy part is um, it's still owned by the state. I think it stopped stopped in the 1960s. So there's people out there that were part of this reform school that are still living today. And um, the thing, it just, it, it sucks because investigators and people like that are not allowed in to help these these boys and these spirits cross if they want to because it's it's literally like uh it, i mean it's boarded up there's like a fence going around it with barbed wire so it, in their head you know if they don't realize like hey you know i died you know whatever they could still have that feeling of being stuck and trapped there you know so another another place um, so, like I said before, I'm on a bunch of different forums, Facebook pages on abandoned locations. And so, one of my research things was, like, digging deep into the comments and places that they had mentioned. And one, and a couple places that came up a lot was New Orleans because of what happened with Katrina and how a lot of places had to be left abandoned because of the hurricane. And we know that firsthand over here because even with Florence, there's some houses that still are unlivable. A lot of businesses, too. Yeah, that are still condemned, that are technically abandoned. Um, So this location is in New New Orleans. um, And um, they specifically were talking about, like, it had, like, 140 comments of people talking about this location. So it's an abandoned hospital in downtown New Orleans. Like, it's it's huge. I've I've seen the pictures, and it's huge. Um, it hasn't been open since Hurricane Katrina, but before the hurricane, it was one of the oldest hospitals in the United States. Mm. Um, and they really don't let, allow a lot of people in there just because of the stuff that I'm going to tell you here in a second about it. Mm-hmm. So there's still boxes of blood. There's used needles. There's uh, rotting body parts still there. Because you got to think, you know, a hurricane, especially with them, if they thought, oh... You know, this is just going to be a category three. This is no big deal. And then it goes back and then comes back and hits you at a five. They only have a certain amount of time to get people the hell out of there. So the last thing on their mind is probably removing body parts and needles and stuff like that, you know? And then two, when you have the water rise inside the hospital, if it did, I don't know exactly how it rose on that, but I'm guessing it did. Um... You know, it's going to disperse everything and then make everything gross. So, 
Yeah. So um, the hospital is called Charity Hospital. And it had significant flood damage in Katrina. And that is one of the things is like literally you walk in there, you could see mold. Um, apparently when they, how they evacuated patients made national headlines, but it never reopened. Um, there was a photographer that was allowed in there. He specifically goes around and I guess photographs like these abandoned places in the Southeast. Um, he goes by the name abandoned Southeast and he said that he saw tons of body parts. Uh, I think he was saying like pieces of gallbladders, fingers, just things that never got restored because you know it's an active day at the hospital and then bam you get hit whatever's left is whatever is left so that makes me question i don't know they didn't answer it but uh uh what about the bodies in the morgue yeah just leaving those behind yeah and then so i mean Maybe a floating skeleton down the river somewhere. <laughs> My God, I could not even imagine. Um, even toxic waste. So poo, infected poo, like people that have problems with stuff all over the place. Well, we so. call it toxic waste, but. Yeah, I would say toxic waste, infected <laughs> poo. Um, so, yeah, decaying fingers, gallbladders, specimens thrown. It's all over the war- wards. So um, the hospital is still patrolled by security. Um if you look at the pictures, you can see the moldy wallpaper peeling from the walls and hazardous chemicals piled up in the hallways. Um, they say no bodies actually reside there. I guess they say they were able to remove them. I don't know. Like, to me, that would be the last thing other than, like, the actual body parts. That's got to suck if you had something, like, you gave part of yourself for them to look at. Mm. And then it gets lost in the hurricane, and you're like, damn it, gotta give the other piece now. Oh, there was a guy waiting for a new leg. Oh my gosh, that's... Um, So, I looked at some of the comments, and there was one specific lady that kept going around and saying... Or, not going around, but kept saying that she said she even had a hard time standing. Because you gotta think, this place probably was haunted to begin with. Mm. Because of the sheer fact that it's... I mean, it's one of the oldest hospitals in the U.S. They had a lot of... uh a lot of make way with, you know, like deaths and destruction and stuff like that in different periods of American history. I mean, I think I can't tell you the exact day that it was built, but I think it was in the 1700s or 1800s. So it was a long time ago. Um, and she said just standing on the grounds is insane. Plus you have a natural disaster like hurricane Katrina where everything is in dismay. Everything is crazy. You know, a lot of stuff. So, um, one person also said that they had a photo of an apparition in one of the windows, but it got deleted. Now, the crazy thing about this location, too, is apparently there's no electricity. Um, and yet there's a window light that comes on all the time. What was that story I heard ever so long ago about, like, a uh, police station getting a call from a Bennett hospital, like, a lot to a mm-hmm. point where they just like, stopped ignoring it? Because yeah. they would answer the phone, there'd be no one behind it, or they hear screaming or something. Well, I some people in the comments were saying, like, oh, it could be the homeless, because apparently downtown New Orleans has a lot of homeless mm-hmm. um, people. So it could just be someone, you know, looking for... Linda Vista. Oh, yeah, Linda Vista. I totally forgot about that. Linda Vista Hospital, um, which now is used as a tourist attraction to host haunted tours. So it's not so much abandoned as it's preserved. Yeah, there's a lot of there's also a lot of places that I'm going to touch on a little bit later that um, is like that. Like they're not abandoned; they use. I mean, they're technically are they're abandoned from their original use, well, and no one uses them other than to show like time capsule of what was it was like. But another place in New Orleans that I believe Corey even mentioned, I'm not sure, um, in his on the blog interview was the Six Flags New Orleans. Um, apparently in 2002, because I think Katrina hit in 2005, 2002, they had an, an add-on part called Jazzland. And um, it was, they got hit by Hurricane Katrina. And if you look at the pictures, like, it is eerie as fudge. I like, think any amusement park at Benning would be, because you uh, expect it all to be joy and ah, people yeah. on it. And you just see, like, the after-left effect of, like, animatronics or faces rotting away. And- yeah. Apparently there's a lot of clowns there. Like, hey. So if you're scared of clowns, <laughs> don't go there. Um, there had been plans to reopen it, but redevelopment issues um, 
have halted a lot of the progression to try and reopen it between the city of New Orleans and Six Flags. Apparently, the vibe of it is so creepy that it has attracted and been on the bucket list of tons of urban explorers and paranormal investigators. According to Ghost City Tours, who did an article on places in New Orleans that is abandoned and also have a paranormal history, says that if you walk through the area, you immediately feel a presence. You feel the eyes of someone watching you. Some have reportedly heard metal banging and motors, like the, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the rides, like gearing up, ready to Yeah, that scratching metal sound using horror Ugh. films. It's like, like a metal, like swing or like a Ferris wheel moving on its own. Yeah. And then you can hear whispers in some of the areas. Um, again, reports of lights being turned off, but there is no electricity. Um, a photographer that goes around and, well, he specifically went around to New Orleans during, after Katrina and continues to go there to, uh, take photos of places that, you know, were hit hard with Katrina and technically are still abandoned, um, and to show the progression of, you know, the areas. Um, his name is Skip Bolin, and he said that uh, he was drawn to this amusement park. Like, it, there's something very weird. Um, let me see. Okay. So then, after moving on to this, I was very curious about, like, other states. Because there's a lot of places around this area, apparently, that are abandoned that we haven't even attempted to go to yet. Um and apparently, each state has their spookiest abandoned place. Um, so, starting off, I thought it was interesting in Alabama, right? They have something called the Jem- Jemerson Center in North Jemerson 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 Center in Northport, Alabama. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know. It sounds like we're saying it wrong. Jemerson Jemerson Jemerson. Well, Alabama, so I'm assuming. Uh, hey. <laughs> um. Also known as Old Bryce, this location has many different uses over the years. It started as a plantation house in the early 1900s and transitioned into a nursing home until it was closed in 2003. Apparently, there are some dark legends and darker history surrounding by it, but you have to really dig to find those. Mm. Kind of be like in the local lore. So, Jemison Center. Maybe if we go through that area, we would have to go through Alabama to get to Texas. So if we vacation to San Antonio. There are better places in Alabama that I would go visit. Oh, he is in Sloss Furnace in Alabama? Right? Yeah, I think, I think so. so. Yeah. I think so. Is it? I is it? Know. I don't remember. I don't know. I know we would, it's one of those states that we, like one of those south states that we would pass. I remember seeing it. So North Carolina, funny enough, mm. actually, and this is one of the places that is abandoned, but they it's not abandoned. Like, you don't have to jump through hoops to go in it. Um, USS North Carolina at Wilmington. The battleship. Yeah. Um, so I know a lot of people locally that says they've had um, stuff happened. You didn't have your abilities yet when, the last time we went. We weren't even doing paranormal stuff last time we went. No. Um, so maybe, mm. I don't know, as a retreat for you guys. We won't actually like investigate, but maybe take you guys around on it. I don't know exactly how they feel about videotaping and stuff. I think you're... It's a lot of... Ver- I, got, I remember when I was there, I got a lot of vertigo. And then I kept getting, like, very, very hot spots on my uh, chest. And I think it was used in World War II, so it did a lot of the, like, the naval, um, what? No, I just had a thought of me pulling the whole damn ship. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. (laughs) I pulled Um, entire acres of land. A ship wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Um, What is he talking about? Go back to our episode where I talk about my ability. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, yeah. So a lot of a lot of people say they've seen like ghostly things like figures and voices and I'm trying to think I don't think we have any video or any footage from when we went there. Um it's definitely interesting to go just to go um because you know it's a battleship it's yeah. cool. Um but I know I did get a lot of vertigo but that's also could be the ship. Yeah. So well, the ship doesn't move. I don't know. I get vertigo when I'm on the ship. So mm-hmm. I was thinking maybe just the warping of the ship in general. Are you just feeling you know, like seasickness from sailors who were there? I don't know, but it was, uh, I don't like the close quarters or the steps. I have a weird thing with steps. I don't know if I ever fell off steps in a past life. Maybe I don't know. And died that way. I don't know, but I have a weird thing with steps. So does Megan though. 
on our paranormal team, the other Megan, she, I remember, I don't know. Like, I remember when we were at the library and it has that big staircase and we had to scoot down it because we kept feeling like we were going to get pushed. <laughs> so, and like the, the basement steps, mm-mm, I'm not a fan of those type of things. Like, yeah, I fell down when I was a kid, but no, I don't have any uh-uh. aversion to it. I have to scoot. I'd rather scoot down, look retarded or look bad than. Like, Megan, it's five steps. I don't care. I gotta <laughs> scoot down. Could you imagine those big buildings? Like, those, mm-mm. especially in the dark. I'm scooting. I choose to scoot. All right, I'll see you in a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> I choose to scoot. Anyways. Um, so North Dakota, because I thought was interesting, because you normally don't hear too much about North Dakota with like I don't know there was buildings there. Oh my gosh! <laughs> um, they apparently have one that was featured on Ghost Adventures called the San Haven Sanatorium mm. in Dunseth. I could be saying that wrong. Don't come at me if we have anybody listening from North Dakota. Mm. Um, the San Haven Sanatorium is located just north of Dunseth and has been abandoned since the facility was shut down in the 1980s. Um, apparently there's a lot of experiences there. Um, from seeing like shadow figures, hearing things, disembodied voices, uh, doors closing, that kind of thing. And it was featured on an episode of Ghost Adventures. It must have been one of the earlier ones. I don't remember. At least not the non um exciting ones. So I thought this was interesting. Um because there in Tennessee, there's a place called Elkmont Historic District in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Um it's within the Smoky Mountains, um, which that area there's a lot of lores and stuff like in that area to begin with. Um rests an abandoned resort community that was once home to a hotel an Appalachian clubhouse, and several single-family lodges. Parts of the little ghost town still exist, and it's rumored that those killed in horrific logging accidents still roam the village. That area has a lot of ghost towns, I noticed. There's even that ghost town, I forgot what it's called, but they used it as a backdrop, I think, for District 12 or 13 in Hunger Games. Mm. Yeah, and... and well, Western North Carolina. You think, I, I, I never suspected Tennessee to have it, but I know California, Arizona, most mining towns and stuff like that become ghost towns afterwards because all the gold's gone. So there's no yeah. reason for anybody to live there anymore. And they just they move back up the shit and leave. So it creates a lot of ghost towns. I know there's one. Is it Tennessee or is it somewhere around northeast or central east area that was the town that inspired Silent Hill? Ew. You know what I'm really? talking about? No. God damn, I forgot the name of it. Uh, the mining facility underneath there where they actually mined uh, coal and stuff like that caught fire. And it's still burning today. The whole city had to leave because there was smoke and ash coming from underneath the ground that set fires and burned the entire well, was town down. So people died and stuff like that. But the, uh, the fires are still burning in the mines underneath. And the whole town's like a ghost town, essentially. And that's what inspired Man. Silent Hill. Ew. You know what Weird. I'm talking about? No. No. I forgot the name Weird. of it. I kind of want to go through and plot all these places and, like, do road trips. Like, I'm I'm so for... Um, I know Corey had mentioned, like, hey, you ever come up to Massachusetts? You know? Are you trying to do a Boston accent? No. That just came out that <laughs> way. Um, if you ever come up to Massachusetts, you know, like, I'll show you around. I'll show you these places. And I'm like, yes, we need to plan a trip to Massachusetts. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so pumped about. I don't know why. I don't know. Why. It's not even pumped. It's like I'm scared internally, but I'm excited to see these places. I don't know, but I was excited researching all this stuff. Yeah, that'd be interesting because a lot of places over there I know that are relatively haunted and stuff like that. And the fact that Boston itself is one of the original cities from the creation of the United States, so a lot of history there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So Utah. Home of Truth. Now, this place, it it makes me want to do a Haunted Utah episode. Okay, so apparently this location is abandoned, located in the middle of nowhere in San Juan County, and the former house to a utopian cult. There's also a slew of burial sites on the property and mummified corpses. Uh, Sorry, Utah and San Juan almost sound like contradicting names. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I yeah. thought Utah would have a Hispanic a, city. 
Yeah. Sounding city, anyway. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, yes. So I thought that was interesting. I mean, it, uh, like, when I looked at the thing, it kind of looked like almost like deserty ranchy looking, like almost like Skinwalker Ranch, kind of like the entrance, mm. which I thought was interesting. But I don't know. I was like, dang. Um, and then there is in Michigan, the Northville Regional Psychiatric Hospital located in Detroit. It was uh, created in 1952 and closed in 2003. So that was not that far w- along, like far away. 19 years. Oh, dang, it is long. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> <sighs> Jeez. Okay, never mind. I was thinking like, oh, that was yesterday. I know. Well, I guess like um, compared to other. I was in high school in 2003. <laughs> I think it was like compared to like you see like, oh, closed in 19... 19- 90 closed in 1985 closed in 1963 you know what i mean and then you see oh two in the 2000s you know (laughs) yeah anyways okay (laughs) we're just gonna continue on uh the former northville regional psychiatric hospital is known to be a hotbed for paranormal activity the grounds are completely off limits due to asbestos but people have managed to get inside of shared stories of hearing disembodied voices and footsteps so it seems like a lot of the stuff especially i'm sure a lot of these places you know it's a lot of residual too Mm. especially asylums especially like mental hospitals but actually that's the same thing i don't know why i said it like that Mm. Uh, but hot hospitals okay so um i just wanted to get some of those locations out just so you guys can Kind of know what's like around your area if you're listening, kind of, you know, areas. Um, but we did have someone reach out to us. Um, she and her husband, or not husband, sorry, boyfriend, um, v- urban explorer essentially, and kind of involved the paranormal into their, um, urban exploring. And they visited the Babcock Center on Bull Street in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, and, it's actually a video, and if you guys want the link, make sure to reach out to us on Instagram and we'll share it. But you see them going into this location, and they're just talking with each other, and you hear this little kid. It's it's pretty clear. I would say it's close to a class A. Like, it's clear. You can hear this little kid just, I don't know exactly what it's saying, or what the kid is saying, but you can hear the little kid. And it was a part of the ward that they had never been to. But as they're walking, you can hear like, like it. I mean, it's clear. It's freaky. Shit. Yeah. Well, nothing, nothing dangerous for us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, um, I found some. Okay. Urban explorer stories. Yeah, because there wasn't very much other than like the typical like they go to these locations, you hear footsteps. You go to these locations, you know, like the typical kind of paranormal stuff that you would hear. Um, door slamming on their own, you know, kind of residual stuff yeah. like that kind of thing. But yeah, urban exploring scary stories um, from our favorite website, Thought Catalog. Love that place. They have <laughs> such interesting articles. Yes. Uh, this one is called We Found Blood Stains Across the Ground. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh-huh. Uh, at a hotel in my hometown uh, that everyone breaks into, it is the most famous building in our town, and our downtown is super run down. So uh, he didn't say where, just I guess you get an idea where. Anyway, uh, me and my two friends crawl through the basement from the side entrance, and initially, all we see is spray paint graffiti, which is normal. But as we uh, make our way up to some uh, really steep steps, we see a bunch of dead cats that have been dragged around and left bloodstains on the ground. We pretty much uh, booked it the hell out of there after that. Uh, We're probably going back in a couple weeks, and that shit uh, better still be there. Because if it's not, that means people were using it for specific reasons. Ew, that's And that's, I think, what would freak me out, because not only are you dealing with, like... The paranormal that could, mm. I mean, a lot of these places could harness dark energy, regardless, like demonic stuff, whatever, depending on, you know, where you're at. And then, two, if you got someone that conjures stuff up with stuff like that, I mean, like, could you imagine? Uh, in, 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 yeah. Ugh, freaks me out. 
But like adrenaline pushes me. I don't know. Freaks me out though. Uh, as you remembered one, hmm. uh, it was on again episode of Ghost Avengers. <laughs> But um, it was a, a Bennett Hospital. I remember that much. I can't remember the damn name of it. But I remember the story. Mm-hmm. Um, was told to, I think it was Zach or whoever was doing the interview at the time. But the abandoned hospital, which was abandoned mm-hmm. that they went to, mm-hmm. uh, was famous for hearing a scream. Oof. Which they did catch while they were there. But that wasn't the story I'm thinking of. I was thinking of the story that was told to him was that uh, one time while he and his team were investigating it, um, that a giant uh, white figure... Walked around the corner that was probably eight feet tall. Dang. That uh, his its face looked like hands, but it had hands, uh, and its eyes were glowing white. What? Yeah, that's <laughs> insane. Um. Oh, this one's really short. <laughs> okay. But now it makes me want to know where it is because this is from my home state. Yeah. Uh, it says I found a gigantic cemetery vault. Oh, sorry, cement vault under the Arlington National Cemetery. Super spooky and not on any map. Mm. If you know anything about the Arlington National Cemeteries, where they bury majority of the soldiers all across the United States, mm-hmm. right? So to have a giant cement vault underneath it is very sus. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I think Texas, when I was looking up that article, um, but they were talking about like in each state, like the most intense, like abandoned location that's, you know, got haunted stuff. One of the um, places in Texas that they mentioned was the Alamo. Which, even it, though it's not abandoned, you don't have to like break through anything to get in there. Hmm. But, um, and they use it more of a museum like the USS Wilmington, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, I remember there's another story. I I remember watching a video on YouTube. Um, it was part of a list of like scary encounters, urban exploring encounters, and um, yeah, this is way back. Uh, like maybe now that I'm thinking about it, almost ten years ago. <laughs> um, but no, the, the the guy was telling a story that he used to urban explore this building in his city. Um, I think he said Detroit or New York. I can't remember which one. Some big city. And he always went to this place to urban explore because it was abandoned and stuff like that. And it was pretty cool to take pictures like Corey does. Um, but one of the times he was there, he was upstairs and he heard these guys coming and talking. And he peeked around and saw there were two like gang mayor guys. Like they looked like that. They had guns in their in their in their their pants, they could see clearly, and they're having they carried drugs with them. Um but he, what he found earlier that day was a backpack left behind that he thought maybe someone left behind. Mm-hmm. But when he looked in the backpack, um, there was there's money in it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, shit. And he thought to himself, this is probably left behind for a drug bus. Yeah. And lo and behold, no more than five minutes later, those guys show up <gasps> for the money and leaving behind the drugs. Um, so he literally hid. And he, you can see the footage from his camera where he had with him was he was hiding somewhere and you can hear the guys talking. Like this motherfucker, blah, 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 we better get him going, dude, fuck, fuck it, blah, blah, blah. You can hear him talking and shit like that, right? And he's fucking hiding and making sure that he's not seen because he guarantee if he was caught, he was likely to be killed. Dang. So not only are you dealing with ghosts, you're dealing with probably. Yeah. Well, violence. no, because that same website that you found, the thought on catalog. the th- thought catalog yeah. that breaks down, um, it's a really good article. I, I believe they grab most of these from Reddit because it looks like Reddit usernames. Yeah. Um, but there was one that was called There Were Scratch Marks Inside of the Closet. Yeah. And um, it was by the name You See the Thing Is. <laughs> you See the Thing Is. Yeah. No. <laughs> Anyways, this is the story that they wrote in. I was in a house that the police confiscated from a biker gang. That right there does not seem fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, my job was to access the damage for an insurance company. The walls were all painted white and the floor were sheets of plywood painted re- or dark red. I was going around measuring each room, opening doors, no problem. Uh, I then opened the linen closet, and it had deep scratch marks on the inside and dents on the back of the door like someone was trying to escape. The freaky part was straight ahead at my head level was a round red splatter pattern on the back wall that had been painted over with a coat of white paint. Freaked me out. like someone. It made me think like someone was trapped in there, and then someone opened the door and shot them in the head. So, uh, yeah. 
I asked Corey about like here dealt with anything. He said most of the time he's only ever running from security guards or cops. Yeah. Um. He never had to deal with anything like that. But then in the in the Boston area, which we talked about it before, of how north east or even northern states seem to have more abandoned buildings say, versus the south and it's mostly because people live in the north or moving to the south midway through their lives so places like that get abandoned because they are no yeah. longer using for development and it's crazy too yeah. like because over here like with the hurricanes like a, a but there's like a weird house uh in northwoods right in like that area it's on sioux drive it's it's got articles about it Apparently, it's been abandoned for, like, since the 80s. And no one knows why. No one knows the story as to why. The, apparently, this guy, in November of this year, of last year, actually, bought the house and is renovating it. But it kind of makes you think, like, okay, all of these years, not a single person attempted to buy the house. Like, what's wrong with it? Mm. I mean, it does. it's very nice. It's big. Like, it's got good structure to it. Maybe I should drive by it. Yeah, it's on Sioux Drive. <laughs> yeah, but um, so when you look when you look at the thought catalog, apparently, um, you get weird stuff like that. Like some some explorers have seen blood, some weird animals touched by ghosts, or something unseen, door slamming, apparitions. Uh, Corey did. If you guys haven't checked it out on Instagram, he let us post it, but it's a picture of. Um, he was at, I think he said, I think it's called the Lakeville Hospital. It was one of the first places he's went. And, uh, it was an apparition in the window. And he was thinking that it was like a nurse, which is crazy. Cause like when he, before I even zoomed in, like my third eye, I saw a woman looking down at like, I don't know, like, uh, like a folder looking thing, book thing. So I don't know. But it's insane. So. In summary, mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to urban exploring, from yeah. what I've seen, and funny enough, I remember, I think, before we even met, I always wanted to do urban exploring because I would like to go to places that were abandoned and take things that uh, otherwise would be worth stuff. I don't know. It was just my thought when I was in my, my teens. Really? <laughs> uh, I... Well, now I know that haunted objects and stuff like that. But, but yeah. then again, anything I will touch or something i could probably take the haunted out of the haunted object but um no i now if i want to go to like urban explorer place like that it's just mostly for history reasons because i like yeah. learning about the past and stuff like that so see like something of a file that was in like the early 1800s or like 1920s or something like that and reading the language or they use or something like that or what would happen in the medicine or whatever like any of that I like to see um or maybe something cool left behind that you know not say worth something, but it's a cool collector thing that you can keep yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to paranormal investigating and urban exploring, they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. Because not every location you go to is going to be laid out, taken care of, and available for you to investigate. Some places are going to be hard to get to. Some places are going to have to, you know, trudge through the mud or through the the woods, and then you finally find a building that's falling apart, and you got to be careful to walk here or walk there, um, so you don't go through the floor and end up in the basement from the yeah. second floor. Um, and going to locations like that uh, is necessary for the reason that some spirits that are stuck there hardly get anyone to contact with because no one's ever going to make it out there or into a certain spot that's relatively hard to get to. Yeah. So I think when we investigate more, we need to try to find a place like that. Yeah. Granted, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Yeah. Because we're not the most fittest people in the world. <laughs> um, most likely, I probably wouldn't try that... to fit. I'd just try to bust my way through things. Yeah. <laughs> just tanking through. No. The juggernaut. No. <laughs> well, yeah. There's. We're... You're not going to fit through this well... door. Now I am. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. If we ever had to get chased by, like, security guards or whatever, uh, I might as well just get caught. <laughs> Can you carry me out of here? I'm tired. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't run. <laughs> um, but yeah. Where's your I thought? don't know. No, I don't know. Um, I did for some reason. This is coming up. I don't know why. Maybe someone listening needs to hear it. I'm not sure. Um, but it's kind of crazy because I don't know if anybody out there has ever dreamt about 
abandoned places. Like, I tend to dream about this abandoned aquarium and abandoned water park all the time. And I don't know if someone out there, like, is like, oh, yeah, I have too. But um, there's a, a lot of abandoned, like, places that I've been to in, on the astral plane. So, not actual, they're not actual places that I know of. Who who knows if they are? But, um, I don't know. I'm curious to know if anybody else has dreamt of abandoned places. Hmm. Now, the like one place specific. that I would like to go to that would cause some urban exploring skills to be used, mm-hmm. but also a boat um, and breaking the law would be go to Pavelia Island. Oh, yeah. That, that would be, yeah, probably... Just imagine the energy I pull from there. Uh. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway. So next week's episode. Is a DACA one. Yes. Um, It's called, we're calling it the Devil's Places. Yes. Or the Devil's Place. I kind of like the Devil's Place better. Sounds Even like a crappy restaurant. Hey, the Devil's Place. Your bunghole will burn when you leave here. <laughs> <laughs> Bad tacos. Anyways. No, there is a place. Uh, no, it's not called that. It. It's off. Oh, uh, I was about to say, if there's a freaking place. Well, not, I think it's off um, Devil's Backbone. I think it's called but Devil's Backbone Restaurant in uh, San, San Marcos area. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's in my hometown, Texas. It's called Devil's Backbone because it's twists and turns highway. It's way up in the Ugh. hill area. So if you drive off the edge, you're most likely going to die. Put it to you this way. Sometimes the hills in that area are so... Well, it's called the hill country, mm. but are so bad. I remember when I first started driving, I actually cried. Like, it... it, it. <laughs> Some people live on the side of the cliff and yeah. the hills, and it's just... it's. Scary. Yes, the devil's places. Yeah. And, find, and a cool too. Uh, looking to look forward to for next month and a month after is some cool bonus episodes we got coming up. Yeah. yeah. Um. So one of the places that we are going to talk about that we've mentioned, I think, on uh, I forgot which episode we actually mentioned it on, but um. Uh, so basically, a devil's place or places is going to hit really dark haunted locations, like really dark places that apparently, like. Just the devil's fuels. left a mark. Yeah, exactly. So one of the places, um, the Devil's Tree. I mean, it's got the name in the in the thing. Yeah. And we have a paranormal investigator that has been there multiple times, and can give you firsthand encounters. And that is Mike from More Party Paranormal. Mm-hmm. Yes. But yeah, so look forward to that next week. Um, so the episode's going to come out on the 11th, and then the following Wednesday, that's when Mike's bonus episode's going to come out. And then that Friday, too, it'll have another episode that'll tie him to everything. Kind of a weird way to announce it, but all right. Yeah. Yes. So we got a bonus episode with Mike the following week after the episode. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. That makes any sense to anybody. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, yeah, look forward to that. And the bonus episode with Mike, where we talk about the investigations, the places he's been. Yeah, because he's been to a lot. He's Waverly Hills, too, I mm. think. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. Uh, I also got another bonus episode. Um, don't know when it's going to be scheduled, but I'll talk about that more uh, next week. Yes. Uh, about what and who it is with. Yes. But, um, yeah. So, as always, catch we'll catch your, your widows. Next- don't oh, you I'm- dare. <laughs> don't you I dare don't steal my line. I don't You're not going to hear me go, Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why my energy is all off right now, all over the place. Anyways, okay, go ahead. Stepping on my damn toes. <laughs> go ahead. As always, we'll catch your widows in the next one. Yes. Monster